Hi, I'm Dr. Bertie Sperry, and I need to tell you this story. So I went to visit two of my sisters, who are not my biological sisters, but they were my sisters, and they live on a farm, a huge farm that their father um, passed down to them. Um, this farm, I can't imagine how this man would have gotten this farm in southern Georgia, hundreds of acres of land, and I think the story is, is that he bought it through someone else who had to stand in for him to get it. Anyway, um, so they had these hundreds of acres of land and there are cows there. And my granddaughter went with us and she, she of course, you know, we let her know you're going to see your aunties and, and they live on a farm and they have cows. And so she was so excited. And so they went out, the cows had come back. Um, and so um, there's loads of cows. And so um, one of one of the sisters said, um, didn't we used to say something when, when we were little? We would say to the cows, like, go away, go away, go away. So then my granddaughter started going, go away, go away, go away. I said, no, you got to do it deep so they can hear you. She goes, go away, go away, go away. So we're doing it. And the cows, when they start coming back, and we're doing the go away, go away, go away, the cows start looking, and they look up, and they're looking and I said, the cows got some generational memories. <laughs> and we we all, no, I said ancestral memories. We all laughed about it. And then I began to think about it. And the land and the cows and the trees and the people and the ancestral memories that we all carry forth, that we hold, that we have the anger, the resentment, the hurt, the shame, the stuff from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, the wars and the rumors of wars. My mother used to say a thing that broke her heart to say it. I don't tell this story out loud because it's difficult. My mother had friends of every race and sexuality and ethnicity and, and they were close, dear friends to her. But my mother would say, Listen to me. You get as close as you want to. Be as close. Be as loving. Be as kind. You love white people. You don't hate them. Don't walk around with hatred in your heart. And you can get as close. You can marry them. They could be your best friends. But know this. If there's a war. And they say whites on one side and blacks on the other. Your good friends who are white are going to take the side of the whites. I never understood why she said that until I realized that she was raised by her grandparents. My mother was born in 1918. Her grandparents had been abolitionists and at one point had been enslaved. Her grandfather was really old when he was raising her. And they saw or heard about the Civil War and how all their friends who had been their friends took the other side. because of how they were born, because of this generational and ancestral memories, because of all that stuff. And I grew up hearing that and to some degree believing that and thinking that. And now we look and see these wars where we all take sides because we believe that that's where our loyalties lie our generational and ancestral 
loyalties lie. I was in a meeting one day and talking to some people. We were doing some diversity work. And, and this woman said, sometimes I'm just afraid to speak up. And I said, why? And she was a white woman. And she said, because I don't want my people thinking that I've crossed over to the other side. Here we are taking sides based on the ancestral stuff. What if, what if, what if, what if we took the side of love and refused to side with war and hatred and animosity and hunger and famine and genocide? Go away, go away, go away. I love you, but these sides pain me so much. <sighs> Will you choose the side of love? <laughs>